Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. For the past several weeks, we've been focusing on Final Cut. Now, Motion's going to get some love. Some, yes. Some yes. new features in Motion. Yeah. 5.1. What is it? The... 5.1.1. So there's there's a little bit of change. You know, Final Cut's getting a lot of change. Like every few months, it seems there's a whole bunch of new features. And Motion, you know, honestly, has been relatively untouched the past couple years. It hasn't had any sort of big new features. Um, and there aren't any new big features here, but there's a couple of little things I thought I'd point out. I'm, you know, who knows? Maybe one day I'll get some some big new change here. It's it's mostly a very well-rounded, full-featured app. It lets you create all the effects in Final Cut, titles and transitions and everything. Uh, but it would be exciting to see some other things going on. But I'll show you what we've got, okay? Right. So these are just a couple of the new features that are going on in Final Cut. First, there's motion. a- Motion. Sorry, in Motion. Yeah, I'm sorry, he's doing Final Cut now. First is a, a uh, an improvement to a filter. So I have this uh, clip of my son that's a few years old, but it's really perfect for this example because it's a fairly low contrast shot, okay? And I'm gonna go into the filters um, collection here in the library to the color correction folder and use this one called contrast because it has received a few improvements. Let me make these a little bigger so we can see what's going on. And if I go to the filter inspector, it's always had this contrast and pivot controls, but we have a couple of additional controls here. So the contrast allows you just the overall contrast, you know, really flatten it out, Milky. A really increase the yeah. contrast great, great amount. And then the pivot determines the point around which it's making that change. So if I reduce the contrast quite a bit, but also reduce the pivot point, I can almost create more of a, a much darker looking clip, uh, sort of a more special effect than really a color correction. But what's really interesting now is this smooth contrast checkbox. So if I check that, all huh. of a sudden we get something that actually looks very useful. When without that, you, there's what am I going to do with that? But you turn on smooth contrast, and it actually gets a kind of an interesting look there as we play with the controls. And really, I've just been fooling around with this to see what I can look, and I get kind of a deep, saturated look there. There's an also an option to say, look, I only want this contrast to affect luminance and not color because frequency the color the con the color will be enhanced or or desaturated by affecting the contrast so if i if i check luminance only it has a different look in this case it actually seems to saturate it more because it's getting rid of the impact of um, desaturating the clip okay so if i go in the opposite direction let me reset it and instead i increase the contrast and it makes it look quite a bit more punchy right yep. And I can play with a pivot point around that. And you might think, oh, that looks pretty bad when I bring the pivot point up. But again, if I choose to smooth the contrast, depending on where you go, it can give you kind of an interesting look. Here, it gives it much more posturized look. So I don't like that so much. You mean posterized? Posterized. I said posterized. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, posterized, posterized. I say potato, you say <laughs> potato. So um, if I uncheck the smooth contrast checkbox and instead, instead check luminance only, then you can oh, see wow. that gives it a cool in, look. yeah nice desaturated That's a look. That's nice look. I really kind of like that there. So you can play around and get a very interesting look. If I turn this on and off, wow, you can there's off and there's back on. So that I like in particular by boosting the contrast, playing with a pivot a little bit maybe, but really just doing luminance only. You can create some new effects that you might um, turn the effect off completely. Do a yeah, here this after. so this is before and after. That's that's with it off. Okay, and that's that's the raw clip as it started, and that's with it on. It's fantastic. So it's kind of neat. Yeah. Useful thing, something you might normally do in a three-way color corrector type of situation, but it's neat. You can do that kind of thing in motion. Now, the other thing is there's been a, an additional parameter added to the sequence text behavior. So here I have some text. I just threw it on a background so it would look more interesting than being on black. And I'm going to go to the library. I'm going to go to behaviors, to text animation, and apply the sequence text behavior. And I'm not going to go over the detail of how this behavior works because we've covered it, it so many times. We've covered it before. It's a great thing for creating animation on text. But what I will do is show you some new, something new here. First of all, I'll trim it to last just for a short amount of time. Tap O, Command Option O to set a range. And then what I'm going to do is zoom out a little bit and drag up on this first character. You should all drop in and spin it around a little bit. Let me drag up a little higher and spin around like that and then Shift-Z. So now if I play, 
each character will drop into place. And let me increase the spread a little bit. It's not just dropping in, it's dropping in and spinning. It's dropping in and spinning. It's dropping and spinning, yes. So it's nothing, fast, nothing so new there. So fast you're not seeing the spin. Well, yeah, you are, but it's... A little bit, yeah. Right. So that's nothing new, but what's new that's very cool is there's a new section here called Select. And hmm. if I click the Disclosure Triangle, right now the range is set to All. That means apply this animation, which happens to be animating every character, across the entire line of text. But I could set it to character. And if I play it now, it only affects one character. Huh. Okay, and that's kind of neat because you can have just one character of a line of text or of a word drop in and not the whole thing. There was no way to do that before. Just affect part of a text layer. Mm -hmm. So there's a range, there's a start and end index. And right now it's one for one letter, but I can increase that range. And as I do so, more letters get affected. Or if I only want the middle letters affected, I can increase the start index, and now just the middle few letters get affected. Now, can you randomize that so it's not sequential? Well, there is a, you can reverse it, so it does um, the same thing uh, backwards, and you can invert it, so it does everything but that. And then, uh, in terms of, what did, what did you want to do? Oh, you may want to make it random. Yeah, so they're well, not dropping in like, one letter. Uh, let me think about that for a minute. So one thing you do is increase the variance, which actually increases the variance of the animation style. So now it's going to be coming in from different directions. And that's also not new, but many people don't really realize there's that variance control. And that kind of creates some randomization in the, in the animation. But so to recap, what this new feature does is essentially allow you, with a sequence text behavior, to affect individual characters that you couldn't do that before. It was affecting the entire well, it was always right. affecting individual characters. It was affecting all of them. Right. And now you can establish the range oh, over which range. the animation happens. You can have it just affect a word. In this case, the range is right in the center. Yeah, those couple of letters. It's affecting those couple of letters. And you've, you've got the option, characters in a word, a whole word, word in line. So you can say, hey, instead, I want to animate um, a word at a time. So now each word will drop <laughs> nice. in. But now that whole section is just dropping in at a time. Right. Okay? So you really have, or I could switch this here to word. And now I'll just say that the middle, now each word drops in. I'll say, no, I only want the second word. So I'll go from one to two. Oh, that's, that's okay. nice. Yeah, so it's you're really flexible to choose a section that you want to animate. And whether that section animates as individual characters or that whole chunk together. So when you add it together with the power of the sequence text behavior to begin with, um, it really brings it to another level. So I think it's a pretty cool addition to the sequence text behavior. Well, right. If people that are using this all the time will find that really useful. I think so. It's a, it's a really powerful tool to create completely custom text animation. Excellent. So, if you want to find more on motion, check out rippletraining.com. We have a whole series, like 17 hours worth of motion training from, from this guy right here. And uh, check us out on Twitter and follow us on Facebook. And uh, keep watching Ripple Training. We, uh, oh, keep watching Mac Breaks. Sorry. Yeah, we want to watch that too. But we'll watch Mac Breaks. Uh, we have a lot of great stuff. Uh, in the uh, next uh, few weeks. So thanks for watching another episode of Mac Break Studios.